I'd like to thank PCB Way for sponsoring this project video. All right, guys, so welcome back. I'm going to take a little break from the toroidal vortex motor. I decided that two of the guys gave me ideas. One guy said toroidal motor. The other guy said vortex. So it's called the TV or just vortex motor. I don't know. But anyway, this video is sponsored by PCB Way. They're sponsoring another project for me. As you guys know, I've built many rotors using PCB Way services. This is the one that was done with SLS nylon. This is incredible. And so, let me put that back up there. This next one, when I got that nylon rotor, PCB Way sent this little trinket. And I was really curious about it because I didn't know if it was something that was, you know, made off campus, so to speak. And it's just done for trinkets. And so I asked them, I contacted my uh, marketing person over there. And they said, no, this was actually made in-house. And it's, it's a SLA with a special post-processing, um, I forget what it was called. I think it was called um, <clears throat> varn some, some type of varnishing where they take this and they make it nice and shiny. So I thought, I have to have a rotor made like that. So I 3D, so I 3D print, I mean, I uh, Fusion 360 up a rotor and these guys sent it to me. And here it is. Let me get it open here. Let me get this out of here. And it's small. Most of my rotors are very small from those guys because I don't want to make something that's really big and crazy. But look at that. That is beautiful. And the dimensions are right on. So it's a six... A six pole rotor has a space for a bearing here and a space for a bearing here. And I don't know if I'm going to 3D print a cap like I usually do for my rotors, for my PCB way rotors. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Where is my other one? Oh, here it is. Like this one here. This was the first one I ever did with them. This is made out of aluminum. And so I 3D printed on, on my printer. Because I can't print stuff like this on my printer. Which is why I'm really excited to be partnering up with PCB Way. These guys can do just about... I'm convinced they can do just about anything. In fact, when you go to the website. And you choose 3D printing... If, if there's something that's not listed there, there's a box there where you can put in like copper or some other steel. And if they can do it, they'll do it. All right. I just dropped a couple of my really good rotors. So let me put you guys on pause here. Stay tuned. So I'm still trying to figure out whether I'm going to put a cap on there. Um, let me... Let me fit it with some bearings and I need to tap these holes and, and you can ask them and they, they will tap the holes for you, but I want to do some of the stuff on my own because I'm not a hundred percent sure on what kind of thread I'm going to put in there. I'm pretty sure what I'm going to do because I do it with all the same ones. I, these are four millimeter holes and they go pretty deep in there too. This is really light, which has me a little bit nervous, but it is really tough so i don't think it's going anywhere so stay tuned all right so i forgot that when i make these i make it so that it sticks up like about a half a millimeter so that i account for a cap on it but because they're press fit in there because it it's dimensionally accurate big time i think i might just try it like this 
I don't know. Let me think about it. Yeah, I got to get my stand up here because I'm modifying my stand so that I can... Well, I'll show you guys. Stay tuned. All right, so here's my stand as it is today. I want to be able to run several of my PCB Way rotors. So I designed these shaft holders. And so they'll sit like this. And then these guys go in here. This way, I'm going to cut a slot in here so that I can move the shaft around. If you can see what I'm doing here. I can move it. I'm going to do it on this on the second level too. Same thing. So they'll be like this. So the shaft, I'll be able to put one shaft here, one here, and one there, or two shafts, or as many shafts as I actually want. Well, not as many, but up to what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven shafts. Not, not realistically. More like a shaft here. A shaft, yeah, more like three shafts. So it'll sit like this. So kind of something like that. But I, what I have to do is I have to cut the slots in these. But I don't want to do that now because I want to get this motor up and running. So let me get it installed, get some coils on it, and get some magnets on it and bring you guys back. Stay tuned. So I think next time I'm going to let them do the tapping i mean i can do it but tapping acrylic like this is really tough because you can only go down so far then you got to pull it all the way out to evacuate the um the powder basically that it makes so it's going to take me a while i don't want to use power tools on this let me put the bearing back in there yeah yeah i i don't want to power tap it i got to do it by hand so this is going to take a little while. So stay tuned. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I decided to go with the power because it works. But the only bummer is because I'm cutting the acrylic, you can see that instead of it being nice and clear like this, it's white inside there. And that's unavoidable. I might be able to put a little bit of acetone on the cutter no i don't think that'll do anything it's cutting beautiful threads but unfortunately it's turning the arms what the inside of it white and i don't know of a way to bring that back to its pristine clearness anyway stay tuned all right so i got it in i was going to use loctite on this i was going to use the removable loctite not the permanent one but i was afraid that it was going to make it blue although that would probably be cool so i have alternating poles and i'm going to lock i'm going to lock the um the shaft i'm afraid though that uh no it should be okay i'm going to lock the shaft because if i lock the shaft you can hear you hear the noise there? So let me figure out how I'm going to do that. Or maybe I'll just... All right, so I got to get the uh, coils set up. Figure out what circuit I'm going to use. Put these bad boys in there. These are my self-aligning, self-fitting, or self-mounting coil mounts. See them. There they are. So this guy slides in and out like this. I put the coil there, lock it down. Gotta love 3D printing. All right, stay tuned. All right, so she works beautifully. I'm starting out low. I don't want to go too high. I have it and see if I lock the shaft down, it doesn't make that noise, but it doesn't matter. So I have it at 10 volts now. Oh, it's running so beautifully true. I'm getting really good output. I don't know if you can see that. The two lights. 
solid output. Maybe blinking a little bit for you guys, but for me, it's solid. And that's at 10 volts. Let's crank it up a little bit. That's 13 volts. Or actually, let me drop it back down. All right, 12.4 volts. Hmm, interesting. It slows down when I hold the shaft so the bearings Huh, I wonder why that is. Because it's using all four bearings now. Anyway, it's working great. Thank you, PCB Way. Let me, let me put my... Uh, where's my PCB Way? Here it is. Let me put it up here and see if it'll vibrate off. I don't think so. <coughs> so the next video, or I'm going to cut these slots out because I want to put a couple of the PCB bearings uh, rotors together. But that runs beautifully. This is the JL94 circuit by Sky Collection. These are my coils that I wound by hand. And they're great for testing. They work beautifully. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Thank you, PCB Way. Check out the link in the description. Ciao.